So welcome to MLT online classes. In this lecture, I'm going to discuss about clotting factor deficiencies and the test to detect clotting factor factor deficiencies. So I'm going to skip coagulation mechanism. So coagulation mechanism is a mechanism by which the fibrinogen will be converted to fibrin by mediated by a clotting factors. So you already know that we have 13 clotting factors in our blood and these 13 clotting factors will get activated in a series fashion and they ultimately forms fibrin. So let me say a brief introduction. So this coagulation mechanism has two pathways. So either intrinsic pathway or extrinsic pathway. The main aim of coagulation mechanism is to prepare this thing. Something called prothrombin activator. So this prothrombin activator can be formed, can be can be formed by two pathways, either intrinsic pathway or extrinsic pathway. Intrinsic pathway, we have some, some clotting factors which involve in producing prothrombin activator, and we have in extrinsic pathway we have factor seven. Factor seven will activate it and it will form prothrombin activator. So this is the first step in coagulation mechanism. Once after prothrombin form, this prothrombin will convert. I'm sorry, prothrombin activator. Once prothrombin activator form, this pro this prothrombin activator will convert prothrombin to thrombin, and this thrombin will convert fibrinogen to fibrin, and this fibrin will result in blood clot. Okay. Now let me say one thing. So in intrinsic pathway, one of the clotting factor is clotting factor four, which is calcium. If I remove calcium, means without calcium. Prothrombin activator cannot be formed. Without prothrombin activator, prothrombin cannot convert to thrombin. Without thrombin, you cannot have fibrin. Without fibrin, your blood won't clot. So deficiency of any one of the clotting factor results in increased bleeding. So I will try to generalize this concept into as simple as I can, just to try to memorize this table. So this table will start with the central star, power star 10. Okay? So it sounds quite awkward but I need to thank one YouTuber his name is Adeleke Adesini who he gave this idea of memorizing coagulation mechanism anyway just see here so this 10th quality factor will be activated by just memorize these numbers 12 11 9 10 2 1 and you have 8 and 5 and in the down you have to write 7 so this 10 to 1 indicates common pathway common pathway so in coagulation mechanism we have three pathways intrinsic pathway extrinsic pathway from prothrombin to blood clot this is called common pathway so 10 2 1 is a common pathway whereas 12 11 8 9 5 10 involves in intrinsic pathway intrinsic pathway and 7 10 2 1 involves in extrinsic pathway see students if you see here extrinsic pathway 7 factor 7 involves so we have factor 7 if you memorize this table, you can understand coagulation mechanism very easily. Now, let me say some tests. Now, there is a problem. If I have any problem with the platelets, means my bleeding time will be increased. And bleeding time can be assessed by platelet count. So, bleeding time is always reflects on the platelet count. If I have low platelet count, means my bleeding time will be increased. Whereas, clotting time... It is the time taken for the blood to clot, right? Clotting time. Clotting time, normal clotting time is 3 to 5 minutes, okay? Now, if I have any deficiencies of these clotting factors, means my clotting time will be increased, right? Increase the clotting time. When my clotting time will increase? If there is no factor 9. Absence of factor 9 uh, delays the clotting of blood. So, the ultimate aim is to blood clot. Blood clot. Without any... Absence of any one factor results in excessive clotting time. So, clotting time will be assessed for understanding clotting factor defects. Clotting factor defects. Okay. Now, I can, now cl my clotting time has been increased and bleeding time is normal. That indicates, yes, there is a problem with my clotting factors. Now, I need to know which clotting factor is deficient. Either the extrinsic pathway clotting factors or the, is there a problem with extrinsic clotting factors such as 7 or is there a problem with intrinsic clotting factors in order to identify these clotting factors we can do one more test in order to know extrinsic clotting factor defects we can do a test called prothrombin time prothrombin time will give a picture of defects in the extrinsic pathway of blood clotting mechanism so prothrombin 
time will give defects in the extrinsic pathway and common pathway of coagulation mechanism okay so that is the role of prothrombin type whereas in order to detect any problems in the intrinsic pathway of coagulation mechanism i can do a test and this test is called as activated partial thromboplastin time activated partial thromboplastin time is a test to detect any abnormalities or any defects in the intrinsic pathway of the coagulation mechanism this can be detected by activated partial thromboplastin time then if there is any problem in the common pathway of coagulation mechanism this common pathway problems can be detected by a test called thrombin time so fifth one is thrombin time thrombin time will detect any abnormalities in the common pathway of coagulation mechanism other than clotting time we have one more test called tgt thrombin thrombin generation test the thrombin generation test also detects any abnormal fibrinogen problems within the blood so these are the tests which we will perform to assess the bleeding factor deficiencies so all these bleeding factor deficiencies can be easily assessed by these five tests what are the five tests bleeding time bleeding time to detect any problems in the platelets then clotting time to detect any problems in the clotting factors then in order to understand which clotting factor causing the problem we will go for next tests like prothrombin time to detect intrinsic sorry extrinsic clotting factor deficiencies then activate a partial thromboplastin time test will be detect any problems in the intrinsic pathway of coagulation mechanism and thrombin time will detect problems in the common pathway of coagulation mechanism and thrombin generation test will detect any problems in the common pathway of the coagulation mechanism so all together these tests are called as bleeding profile so bleeding profile have a series of tests all these tests will be done in understanding bleeding if there is any bleeding to a patient means we will go through all these tests to understand what kind of problem he has and also one more quick fact this extrinsic pathway is extensively dependent on vitamin k vitamin k plays a crucial role in activation of extrinsic pathway so defects in this vitamin k can also malnutrition in vitamin k can also increase bleeding disorder so we will do one more test to detect vitamin k levels in the body so we will do a elisa test to detect uh, levels of vitamin k if there is any vitamin k problems also the bleeding will be increased so these are the tests we will detect we will do to detect any clotting factor defects in the blood so how to perform bleeding time how to perform clotting time prothrombin time activator partial thromboplastin time thrombin time and thrombin generation test this will be i will provide notes to you and you can go through the notes if you have any doubts you can ask me in the classroom or you can text me in the comment description okay so thank you students have a good day see you in the next class